Hello everyone, tonight we're going to take a look at a very special thing to me, and that's going to be base painting. If you can see what's up on the screen, you'll see a number of sizes of Necromunda bases. We've got some 25, 32, and 40 millimeter bases, and the first step is going to be hitting them with some Steinal Res Black Primer. So these bases have been stuck to a piece of cardboard using some spray-on adhesive, giving me a nice surface to work with as I work on a number of bases here. So let's get started. So our primer is dry, we've given them a little bit of time to cure, and I'm going to get out my metallic colors. We're going to be using scale color, decayed metal, old copper, and Victorian brass in this order. This is going to be through an airbrush, so we're going to need a little bit of flow improver as well in the mix. So we've loaded up a little bit of the decayed metal to start with, mixed with a little bit of our flow improver, and we're going to coat the entire top of the base here. Once I'm done with the decayed metal, I'm going to move on to my old copper, and we're going to make concentric circles. So this is only going to cover about two-thirds of the interior of the base. So the darker metallic is towards the edge of the base. And then finally, we're going to load up some Victorian brass and then put that right in the middle, about a third of the interior. And the very middle will be covered with Victorian brass, and this will help smooth out the transition. You'll see a little bit of modulation now. So now that we've got our base metallic colors layered in via the airbrush, ta-da, we're gonna break out some of our Magimix. Thank you, Genuine Vision, which is a mixture of one part Nolan Oil, one part Agrax Earth Shade, and one part Lamian Medium. I'm going to bring in a little bit of water here and mix it up to thin it out just a little bit, and then we're going to heavily apply this to each and every one of the bases. Point, there's a bit of a time skip. We've let our Magimix dry, and we're breaking out the Typhus Corrosion, Nihilac Oxide, and Fire Orange. To begin with, we're going to get our Typhus Corrosion out, and using a piece of recycled plastic, we're going to add a little bit of water to the Typhus Corrosion. Typhus Corrosion has a bit of grit in it, so I'm using some old kind of crummy brushes that I've really beat up. As you can see, we're going to load the plastic and add a little bit of water. I'm going to madly stipple this Typhus Corrosion on the bases um, using that same crummy mixing brush. You can see me smear some of it on the paper underneath my painting area and kind of go back to that a little bit here and there. 
Um, that's to give it a little bit of a drier application since it is kind of liquidy, but I really want that grit and that brown tone to come through. So for the next step, we're going to break out our nylac oxide, and I'm going to use the reservoir on the top of my pot to draw from. And then we're also going to get out Vallejo Game Color Orange Fire. This makes a great rust uh, color normally, but we're also using it here to give a little bit of texture, a little bit of irregularity to the copper tone. I'm loading that piece of plastic again with our fire orange for a specific reason. I'm actually going to water this down, and you can see me applying water. And I'm going to water it down to the point where it actually breaks the paint. And you can see individual clumps of pigment kind of floating around in it. This gives me a more regular application. And if bits and pieces of the brown and stuff kind of mix in, that's okay. We're looking for staining, we're looking for discoloration, places where water and dirt and things like that have kind of stained the copper. And here's where we get to have fun again with our old brush. I'm going to stipple that orange heavily onto these panels because it is copper the orange and the copper blend together for the most part, but we should get a little bit of coffee staining, we should get a little bit of irregularity in the color distribution, and break up some of the shadows from our wash stage. I'm applying this broken wash pretty heavily and using a drying tool in between that black and red tool to help dry the wash out quicker as we go applying a couple of layers of this to really make sure that it shows through. So you can see I'm going back in and applying a second round and just touching up little bits and pieces here. We should be seeing some irregularity in the surface now. Now for the final weathering step, we're going to get out that nylac oxide. Again, we're going to load up the top of it with what we need and draw from that. And once we start painting, we'll pick out corners, places where water would gather a few of the surfaces and we'll put light strokes and stipple marks in various areas. Uh, copper patina isn't quite like rust, but it does add quite a bit of character to this uh, set of bases. One last step before we finalize our bases, we're going to apply some Army Painter Matte Black around the rims. One more step, we're going to add a little bit of vignetting to the bases. And by vignetting, I'm going to darken the outer edges using matte black to really enhance the idea of shadow and focus towards the center of the base. This should hopefully highlight the minis that I end up mounting to these bases. I'm using lots of flow improver here and taking very thin, very deliberate, circular motions around the bases. I've only sped this up somewhat, so take your time, apply it thin, apply multiple layers.
and after a quick varnish and a little bit of time to dry, the bases are now complete. We've used a little bit of Model Master's flat coat to varnish them out, so the metallics are very subdued, a lot less lustrous, but it looks grimy, it looks grungy, and it's ready for some Necromunda minis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, thank you for spending time with me, and uh, we'll be back next week with another video. Catch me on Twitch, and until then, have fun! Thank you.